One of the lesser known but very powerful features of iGEMS is its ability to import a CNC file. A couple times a year I'll get a call from somebody and they've maybe lost their original iGEMS file and they've, but they've still got their CNC file out of the machine and they want to know if there's anything they can do with that and fortunately you can import those CNC files back into iGEMS and reverse engineer the iGEMS file. To do that, up on the Tools tab, we've got the NC Reader button here. Click on that. Down here at the bottom, it'll prompt you for specified points. You can either just left-click wherever, click on this, it'll put it right at 00. zero. Choose the CNC file that you want to bring in. And it'll bring up the preview window, similar to the 2D simulation window. And you can step through this if you want to see what it's doing. You can also do things like put marks in different areas on the program that you can refer back to later if you need to. If I click on the mark button here at the beginning of the program, it'll mark where the zero zero point was. You can mark, for example, where the pierce points were if you need to. This pull down here normally set to auto. It'll look at the I's and J's in the program for the arcs and try to determine whether those I's and J's are based off of absolute or relative coordinates. Sometimes when you bring it in, uh, it might bring in something crazy like that. And if that's the case, you can try the other options here until you get it to look like it should. And you've got the rapid box here. If you uncheck this, then it won't bring in the other uh, rapid lines, which in this case we won't need those. So I'll uncheck those and OK. So now we've got our toolpath represented here. So one important thing to figure out if you don't know is whether there's any tool offset applied to the, uh, the tool path here. So you can take a couple dimensions and hopefully you know what they're supposed to be. So here's a circle that's supposed to be one inch. And if we do a dimension from here down to here, 6.04. And here up to here. So this would lead me to believe that I've got 40 thou tool diameter applied here, 20 thou per side. So eventually at some point here I'm going to want to offset lines so that these are the, uh, the correct dimensions. I'll take those off for now. If we zoom in here, we've got our lead in lead out point for the outside, a little bit of a tab there. So I can clean that up, just drag a box and select all those. And I can either draw a line there, or if I click on this line, I can click on that blue grip and I can just bring it down since my snaps are on. Bring that blue grip down to the end of that line to close that up. A couple things you can try sometimes on circles, depending on how they come through. Since we have a little gap here at the lead in lead out point, uh, the cleanup tool won't be able to help me with that too much. Uh, you can try the cleanup and start with a tolerance of zero. Drag a box around here, it'll get rid of any duplicated lines and turn things into circles and such if it can. Uh, this one here, we've still got a little bit of a cleanup because we've got a gap there. If we try and make a part out of that, that won't want to make a part out of that geometry there. A couple options on that. Since we know that's supposed to be a one inch circle, of course I can just use my circle command and I can draw a circle at the center of that circle and switch the diameter mode, make it a one inch diameter. I can do that for all those. If it's a part that's got a lot of holes, that might be a little tedious. So the other option here is once you draw one on the Tools tab, another helpful command here, the Replace option. Click on this. It'll prompt you for your source object. So this is what you want those holes to be. So I click on this. And then it'll prompt you for target objects. So then I can click on the others. And then those... 960 holes should be replaced by 1 inch holes. And then of course on this one I can delete that now. And for the outside we just want to do a, we can just do an offset. So CAD toolbar, offset command, 20 thou, half of my tool diameter. And then click on the object, and then we just have to remember which side that we want to go. So the outside was oversized because we offset our tool path to the outside of the part. So I move my mouse this way, left click, and then I can delete the old outside. And then I'll just want to check that, make sure that I got it right. So I'll do a dimension from 
endpoint endpoint so now that we've got everything to the correct size we should be able to create a part out of that and make a tool path and so on that saves you some time at some point in the future if you have any questions on that let us know thanks